Welcome back to how to use Ubuntu, the beginner's Linux guide. This is part two, and we're just basically continuing on through Linux and just generally getting you to understand how to use certain things. And last time we talked about Firefox, and I believe the last thing that we left on was the download section. So now I'm going to move on to add-ons. Add-ons are basically little plugins that you can download free uh, maybe some cost money I'm not too sure and they can tweak your Firefox browser so let's say actually I'll go to the add-ons page and then I'll show you what you can do and how to get on get an add-on so you're gonna type on add-ons Firefox in Google and then it should be the first one, addons.mozilla.org. Okay, and it'll bring you to this page. In my previous videos, I have talked about the top add-on. So I'm not going to go too in-depth with them, but um, I'm just going to go for one quickly. Uh, let, let's say I want a ad block. Uh, let's say I want an ad blocker. Just go ahead and type add blocker plus. And it's this one, the third one here. All you have to do is click add to Firefox. It'll take a few seconds to download. And then it should ask you to install it. Just go ahead and click install. And then you'll have to restart your browser. Okay, and then it says thank you for installing it. What that one basically does is if you're annoyed by advertisement pop-ups, even YouTube video commercials, it'll block all that stuff. It's a really good uh, add-on for Firefox. So if you want to go and manage those, you just go to tools at the top and then go to add-ons. Or alternatively, you can hit shift control and plus A. Or not plus A, you hold shift control and A all at the same time. <laughs> And then here at the bottom we have clear recent history, and then it has AdBlock Plus, it, like the options for it. So I believe if you add on more of those type, it'll show up underneath there if you need to go through the preferences or whatnot. And the last tab's a help one. You won't really need to use any of those. Now that we have gone fully through Firefox, I'm going to move on to the next program. As you can see on our Unity bar, we have what looks like a little document with a picture on it. It's called Office Writer. And this is where you're going to type all your documents and stuff like that. So basically, if you've used um, Microsoft Office, it's the same exact thing. So you got your font size, the font face of it. It's basically the same layout as it as well. May not be as great, but it's still a very useful um, editor. But what I'd like to point out is that they are slightly different. The formats for Microsoft and Office Writer, so you have to pay attention to what you're saving them as because not all I believe a lot of Microsoft I, I'm not 100% sure actually well I know that Office Writer will accept all formats like Microsoft Word 95, 97, 2000, 2007 all those new ones so you don't have to worry about like, going from your Microsoft text to your office writer. But what you're going to have to worry about is when you save it, if you save it as the office writer format. So just pay attention to that. Other than that, basic text editor. Simple enough. If you know how to use office, you'll know how to use this. Now the next one we have here is 
Excel, or they call it Calc. All the same functions. You got your formula thing here. You got all your cells. You have sheets at the bottom. You know how to use Excel. It's the same thing. Again, with the file extensions, you'll have to watch out. Make sure that you're using the right one. And then the last one we have here is PowerPoint. If you ever used Microsoft PowerPoint before, they call it Impress, but it's essentially the same thing. Got different designs, layouts. I'm not going to go too in depth with this because I find that would be dragging on a little too much. Now we are moving on to the Ubuntu Software Center. This is where you can go. It's pretty straightforward for most of your software downloads. A lot of the things are in here, but not everything is in here. <laughs> so you might have to use some terminal commands and stuff like that. Also, a lot of the older users to Ubuntu prefer Synaptic rather than this. It's less graphical and I, I like using it actually a, a little more than this but for beginners this will probably be the best bet for you it's they I think they even took out Synaptic for the latest version but anywho moving on at the top here we have all software and then it gives you a tab for whether for purchase independent made by Kinokio or provided by you want to and you have what you already have installed then your history of what you've installed then you have your accessories your zip your terminator vim all these other programs calculator if you want a different one it already comes with a calculator by default but if you don't like that one <laughs> it's got books developer tools so now if you're into programming they have various interfaces for programming in debugging tools etc then you got education how to paint math I think this is rather for younger kids who are learning not for older people who are trying to learn these are fonts, so like your text, how they look. If you're trying to download a new font, that's what that's going to be. You got your games. Some games I'd like to recommend. T-World. like that game. Open Arena. That's a pretty good game, too. Those are both shooter games. This is a FPS, and this is a third-person shooting game. And then OpenTDT is pretty cool. It's a... Reminds me a lot of the Bull Cooser Tycoon interface. Cause I think it's the same thing. It's a clone of Transport Tycoon. So if you ever play that, it's a pretty fun game. I'm sure if you browse around there, you can find other games. If you click all, it'll show you a list of every single one of them. So going back, you have your graphics. So if you want to draw 3D, what I recommend for here is GIMP, GIMP Image Editor. It's like the Photoshop alternative. They have updated it recently, and it is comparable to Photoshop, but I still think, I don't know, I'm not really a fan of it. I'd rather use Photoshop rather than GIMP. I know, it's a horrible thing to say, but <laughs> um, I don't know, I just can't get a feel for it. It's just my opinion, but if you guys would like to try it, go ahead. It's the best one here I've, uh, compared to my paint and all this other stuff. Blender is also a good download. It's for use, for use of 3D graphics. Moving on to the next thing, we have the internet. So your chat browsers, your MSN, your FTP, your chat, your web browsers. All that kind of stuff is in here. Your mail. Science and engineering. I don't really need to go through these ones. Because you can just go around and look what you like to download. 
I, I do recommend going through the top region. I don't remember if I said that. View what those. Oops. That one was actually a pretty good one to use or to download. It will help you if you want to play back MP3s, all these restricted extras, Flash, Java, all that kind of stuff. Flash and Java you using for your internet browsing, your YouTube, stuff like that. Um, I don't really system. I'm just gonna check real quick to see if there's anything that I really need to talk about. Um, yeah, not too much under that themes and tweaks. I mean, you can, you guys can go through this and comment below what programs you like to use, what you recommend for others. Now I'm just gonna go over how to install a program. Kind of skip that while I was going through all these. But um, here we have VLC Media Player. It's a very useful video player. It pretty much handles every single codec. That's why I'm going to install it. So you got to click that little button right there to install. Enter your password. And then it will install. Now you can see that progress appeared here. So now if I click them, it will show that it's downloading. And then if I don't want it, I can hit the little X here. It'll also come up in my history of things that I installed. You ain't gotta worry too much about that, but this kinda helps to show you what you're downloading. And then it'll appear either in your tray or if you search through it and type VLC. It's not gonna be there yet because it's not fully installed. When it does get there, it'll be within here. That's where you're going to go and look for it. Uh, oops. I didn't. Now I closed it. Don't. Now it's applying changes. Which will take a few seconds. Okay, now that it's done installing, it brought me back to this screen. Now if I go and search it, I'm just going to establish some credibility here. <laughs> I'll type VLC. Here it is, VLC Media Player. Oops, I did not mean to click that. Save and continue, and now here it is. And then it also comes up as a recent app because I just installed it and uh, opened it. So that's all I'm going to talk about for this tutorial. Next one, we're going to talk about Ubuntu Cloud, go through the settings a little more, go through workspaces. Watching, tune in for part three.